Today we are surrounded by computers and changed by their capabilities, but what exactly are computers and how do they work? Well, first let's imagine you're studying for an open notes true or false history test. When studying, you can have a couple answers in your head at a time, but unless you write these answers down, you're going to forget them. So, you decide then to take notes so you won't forget everything you're supposed to have learned for the test. So now you're taking the test, and it's all true and false, and it's all in your notes, so you're doing all right until you get to the last question that says, were Napoleon's actions justifiable, true or false? And you don't have this in your notes. So what you have to do is you have to think about all the things you can remember about Napoleon, process this information, and answer the question. Well, this situation is similar to how a computer works. A computer, like the test, works only with true and false in a system called binary. This is because of a little creation called a transistor. A transistor is the building block of the computer and, most simply put, it's a switch. Transistors are made up of two negatively charged pieces of silicon placed on either side of a positively charged piece. When placed side by side, the p-type and the n-type parts make a natural barrier to current called a depletion layer. This means that electricity cannot flow through the transistor, which means it's in the false or the zero state. When a small amount of electricity is applied to the p-type section, the depletion layer is decreased, allowing electricity to flow through it, which means it's in the true or one state. As a result, computers process things entirely in zeros and ones. Alright, now that we have that out of the way, let's go back to our analogy. Much the way we need a head for our brain to go in, a computer needs a place for its brain to go in, called a motherboard. The purpose of the motherboard is to hold all of the components of the computer and to provide pathways for the components to talk to each other. This is a CPU. The CPU is the brain of the computer, and much the way your brain has a left and a right hemisphere, the CPU has two main units, the control unit and the arithmetic and logic unit. The control unit does well, just that. It controls the rest of the computer, but more specifically, it directs the rest of the processor, the memory, and any input and output devices as to how to respond to directions from programs. The other job of the control unit is to be a timer. Time within computers is measured in hertz, which refers to cycles per second. Most computers nowadays, however, are measured in gigahertz, which refers to billions of times per second. This means that computers make billions of calculations every second. And speaking of calculations, the other unit is called the arithmetic and logic unit, and it's responsible for calculations and processing of data. The arithmetic unit can perform four basic mathematical calculations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The logic unit, however, tests for certain conditions. The greater than condition, the less than condition, and the equal to condition. For more complicated calculations and comparisons, multiple different processes are combined together. This is a stick of RAM. This is your temporary memory, like that one you use in your head but forgets things easily. Like your head memory also, you can't store too many things in it at a time, but if you're going to start thinking about something like whether Napoleon's actions were justifiable or not, you have to have some recollection of who Napoleon was and what he did. Similarly, if you want to run a program or an app, you need to load that program into the RAM before your computer can process its information. Taking notes for later so you won't forget it is one of the most important parts of studying for a test. And you might have guessed it, but it's the same on a computer. There are two types of storage devices that you might find in your computer at home. Hard disk drives or solid state drives. Hard disk drives are an older version of storage where a physical disk is spun and information is burned onto it with a laser. Solid state drives are much faster, more durable, smaller, and are made up of transistors. It takes just over 8 billion transistors to make one gigabyte of storage. Computers are amazing! One day, they might even let us do this. And there you have it. Those are the basic components of a computer, although I presented a simplified version today for the sake of time. I encourage you, if you want to continue to learn about computers and how they work, please continue to research and watch YouTube videos. There's plenty out there. Speaking of which, thank you for watching this one today, and I hope you have a good one.